Welcome to this online interview by Project Cargo Weekly. Our very special guest of honor today is Mr. Simon Ainsley. He's the Chief Sales Officer at Golf Trainer, and he's based in the UAE, United Arab Emirates. First and foremost, uh, Simon, very welcome to this interview. Thanks very much for having me, Bob. You're very welcome. Uh, I can see with both of our backgrounds, we are into containers today. So I suppose that's what we're going to talk about. Uh, I always allow my, uh, my let's say, uh, prisoners or interviewees <laughs> to elaborate a little bit about their career. I mean, uh, starting off, uh, how did you uh, end up in, uh, in, in shipping, Simon? I joined, uh, I've spent a lifetime, uh, my entire career in uh, in global shipping, although the first few years of my life in uh, in global uh, courier parcel express working for DHL in the Middle East. Uh, oh, yeah. I first came to, uh, I came to this part of the world, uh, I hate to say it, this part of the world in, uh, in 1983. Oh. And I guess I've had a love affair with the area ever since. But uh, uh, for the last 40 years or so, um, dedicated my career to global container shipping, uh, bulk uh, car carriers, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the last 22 odd years with the CMA CGM group based in uh, predominantly Australia and New Zealand, um, oh, yeah. Middle East, uh, and some time spent in Europe as well too. Mm -hmm. um, prior to that, uh, NYK, Pino, Ned Lloyd, Swire. So, uh, so I've, had, uh, I've had a great, uh, a great journey uh, okay. over that period. Um, and uh, now find myself uh, working on the ports and terminal side with Golf Tainer. Okay, yeah, it's a it's a very interesting uh, thing. I mean, first of all, you're you're back in a booming area. I suppose Middle East is uh, attractive for a lot of reasons, and uh, not, not so much the heat, maybe, <laughs> but but at least you, you're back and you had the experience from before. What can you tell our viewers about Golf Tainer? I mean, uh, Golf Tainer to uh, let's say the untrained eye, it doesn't perhaps ring a bell unless you're into terminals and such. Uh, who and where and what is Golf Tainer? Certainly. That's, well, that's a, that's a pretty big question, actually, Bo. Um, I transitioned, I guess, from, uh, from the global carrier side to, to Golf Tainer um, about eight months ago. Mm -hmm. um, I saw an opportunity here to certainly add value from a carrier's perspective uh, to, a, to a, a traditional ports and, and terminals company. Golf Tainer operates uh, terminals in the UAE, Mm -hmm. uh, in Sharjah and Khan, mm -hmm. uh, together with Saudi uh, in Jabal, just north of Damam. Wow. We have a terminal uh, in Umm Qasar in Iraq, okay. uh, and we have an operation in Canaveral in, uh, in Florida also. Okay. Uh, so predominantly a Middle East ports and terminals company focusing on this Indian Ocean uh, rim, but we do have an operation uh, in Canaveral as well too, which... which for all of the terminals um, is predominantly containers, but um, there is a significant portion of break bulk cargo now moving through the terminals also. Okay. Yeah, that was one thing. Many of our viewers are interested in, in project cargos, and it, it seems that many container terminals around the world are getting uh, geared up for accepting more and more oversized OG uh, break box uh, coming on container vessels and Yes, I suppose using uh, the uh, the gantry cranes. Of course, they they have a limit. Uh, what, what is the gantry cranes uh, that, that you have available for you in in Corfacan, for example? Yeah, particularly as far as Corfacan is concerned. Uh, I mean, just a, some some brief detail for the viewers. Uh, strategically located outside the Straits of Hormuz, natural yeah. deep water at sixteen meters. We've got a terminal footprint of just on forty hectares with another 25 hectares of land available for um, strategic BCOs, joint okay. ventures, equity. Oh, yeah. uh, and we have 18 cranes uh, along a key of approximately 1.8 kilometres. Um, and a number of those cranes have a lifting capacity up to 95 tonnes. Well, that's that's pretty impressive. So I would we can say to the viewers that the picture you have be behind you today is, in fact, from Corfa Can. Uh, yes, I it mean, is. To, to watch the cranes. It's very impressive. I've been there once, uh, as I told you, on, on board a cargo ship. And uh, yeah, very impressive uh, place. So that means Golf Tainer uh, running the Corfa Can terminal, very keen to attract new business. H how, how do you go about? I mean, there is a lot of competition among ports uh, nowadays, and everybody seems to have the answer to everyone. So uh, how do you go about making sure that you're the one to choose? 
Yeah, it's a good point, Bo. Um, look, there is a compelling value proposition. We've done quite a bit of modelling uh, in the time that I've been with Golf Tainer. Um, and certainly from a carrier's perspective, which obviously leads through to the, the, the shipper consignee mm -hmm. uh, uh, perspective, uh, there is substantial cost savings to be had at, uh, at Corfa Khan, um, anywhere from between 8 and 15% when you take into consideration distance, charter, fuel costs, and more importantly now, as far as emissions is concerned, mm -hmm. um, there is... Uh, a, a compelling value proposition for Corfa Khan, particularly for those uh, project cargoes that are looking for uh, a terminal footprint that allows them to store and distribute, not only for a, a, a land bridging operation to the ultimate destination, the UAE, but more regionally for the upper Gulf, for the Indian subcontinent, um, and more recently as well as far as East Africa is concerned. So. Corfa Khan offers that complete Indian Ocean rim and can service that entire Indian Ocean rim all from Corfa Khan. Mm -hmm. So that means you, uh, do you, who do you have, let's say, of, of mainline uh, coming in right now? I mean, uh, as I said, there is a lot of competition and possibilities, but uh, who do you have, let's say, a frequent callers of your port right now? Frequent, frequent callers into, into Corfa Khan, currently Emirates Shipping Line. Oh, yeah. um, there's a number of other small regional uh, carriers plying the upper Gulf and, and, and Indian subcontinent at the moment. Um, that's not to say that we're not talking to, uh, to all of the various different global carriers currently. Um, and as well as that, there is a number of um, break bulk operations, much more infrequent than fixed day weekly, of course. Yeah. Uh, but there's a number of break bulk operations, which is... Um, importing timber and oh, yeah. steel into Corfa Khan for okay. distribution, not only through the, the UAE, but also regionally. Um, and we're also talking to a number of other uh, project cargo um, companies as far as other opportunities uh, into Corfa Khan at this stage. As I said, it's a, it's a terrific location for that storage and distribution around yeah. the region. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it. As I said, I've been there before, so so of course the viewers uh, who haven't been there, uh, I can certainly confirm what you are saying. It's a good transshipment hub and and was used uh, or has been used a lot. I mean, project cargo and break bulk. Some of the the ship owners coming into the Middle East. I mean, Korean owners. You have AAL. You used to have Rikmas in the old days. Now you have AAL. You have Costco coming in. Uh, you mentioned Roro earlier. I don't know Roro. Is that something that you take into your terminal as well, or or, or not? Or it's mainly absolutely, absolutely. Um, okay. Yeah, whether it's automobiles or heavy equipment, um, okay. the terminal can cater for that as well too. And we've seen a number of shipments in the last twelve or so months, uh, some of which the equipment's been distributed throughout the UAE, and some goes on to uh, destinations such as East Africa. Yeah, yeah, because the, the reason why I ask, I just heard uh, recently in Rotterdam, I had a meeting with Costco Heavylift and, and they put in an order, uh, according to the, the general manager, they have bought more than 22 Roro ships. I mean, uh, Chinese owned. So they're putting in place uh, because the Roro market is very hot. Apparently, they have a contract of some 5 million cars to be shipped into the Middle East, uh, Costco. Yes, so, so yes, uh, I, I suppose uh, China would be a, a major source of rev revenue, if possible, for for golf training. Yeah, absolutely, Bo. And I was um, I was in Shanghai last week, and uh, mm. I will return to Shanghai next week for um, for the World uh, Break Bulk Expo okay. uh, next Thursday and Friday. Okay, very good. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I mean, we have to say one thing, uh, whether we like it or not, our politicians in the West, uh, they, <laughs> their view is until the next election, but in China, they take a view of the next 20 years. So, yes, so, so, exactly, exactly. So they, they can plan it. But uh, uh, that's that's uh, interesting to know. So as a hub, you, you, you have enough lay down area, you have warehouses, you have all kinds of things that any producer would want if he want to temporarily store at your place. And then when the contract is ready in Iraq or elsewhere, then they can ship it out from, from your. Absolutely. Port. And you, you touched on the fact that you'd been to Corfu Khan before and certainly during the sort of halcyon days of the last 10 or or 15 years, Corfu Khan was a was a booming transshipment hub with with two foundation customers being UASC and, and CMA CGM, of course. Yes. yes. Um, uh, and I remember that fondly from my days with CMA CGM in Dubai. 
um, sort of 2007 to, to 2010. Uh, of course, the world moved on. UASC uh, uh, absorbed by Hapak Lloyd and CMACGM at that time uh, decided for uh, for their own reasons that uh, DP World was a better fit for yeah. for the business at that particular moment in time. So, uh, you know, my role here at Golf Tainer is to look to reignite Corfa Khan and to build that value proposition for each of our potential customers. Right. Um, and coming from the carrier side, I think I bring a unique perspective that allows me to have a look at it from a carrier's perspective, um, particularly understanding the network costs and what it means in terms of saving to uh, to the carrier, be it a container carrier or be it a yeah. break bulk carrier. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it's, uh, as I said, the, the, the facilities you do have are, are really first class and, and it's uh, very efficient there. <laughs> the only thing you can say is that with the competition uh, that you have, it, it's it's good that they have you on board, I believe. I mean, you have to sell that you are unique there because they are very similar, let's say, modern ports around where you are. So so selling it means really being in uh, being on there, you know. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. and I think I think it's I think it's location is is one of the strategic selling points. Yeah, um, you know, you're you're basically you're, you're 24 hours, 36 hours from Karachi, from Mundra, from Navashiva. Yeah. Um, you're only a couple of days to uh, to East Africa as well too. And again, without the nest, without the need of entering the Straits of Hormuz, which yeah. which um, is quite compelling. Yeah, yeah, and uh, here you are thinking uh, the greater politics of the world, I suppose, with with <laughs> the Strait of Hormuz can be a hot place. <laughs> yeah, I mean, certainly it's uh, it's been an eventful place over the last few weeks, and I'm not suggesting that it will get any more eventful than it than it has been. But no. certainly, when we talk to some of the carriers, they they certainly understand from a, a strategic perspective that um, Corfu Khan is a good option. Yeah. Um, should they need it? Um, and 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 we we continue to discuss. Okay, if if let's say a BCO, I mean beneficial cargo owner or a major project forwarder in the world, want to set up shop at your place, I mean, uh, is there office space available? I know you have the laydown area, you have the warehouses, office space. Uh, what about housing? Is that something? It's not so that you drive from uh, Dubai every day, I suppose. <laughs> no, no, absolutely not. Look, you know, we're fortunate that. Um, um, we have a very strong shareholding, uh, which is tied to the Emirate of Sharjah. Oh, yeah. And from their perspective, they're extremely visionary in the fact that they realise that additional business coming through Core for Calm will drive economic activity, which yeah. will lead to more housing, more schooling, yes. uh, shops, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. Um, so from, from that perspective... Uh, we have 100% support from the from the Emirate of Sharjah. Okay. Um, as far as the the actual footprint in the terminal is concerned, be it be it grain, be it timber, be it steel, uh, be it liquid bulk, um, we are more than happy to develop any joint venture opportunities that anybody would like to develop together right. with us. Right. We have the land. We have the expertise and we have the know-how and we have the geographic location. Yeah. Um, so there are a number of customers that we're speaking to at the moment about developing that regional hub for storage distribution uh, around the region. Yeah. Now, I, I see, uh, I understood from your early, what you said in the beginning, that you also got a terminal in Iraq, right? I mean, you... you, you... We do. Well, what can you tell about that? Because that's also pretty interesting. Yeah, look, Iraq is a Iraq is a very strong business for the group. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the market the market is strong. Mm -hmm. um, we have a we have uh, a number of uh, of regular calls on a, on fixed day weekly sailings into into Iraq. Um, all of the businesses that we operate uh, are all underpinned by a subsidiary company known as Momentum Logistics. Oh, yeah. So from a uh, from a uh, a warehousing, transport, and distribution to last mile is concerned. Each of our terminals uh, are underpinned by those operations, and okay. equally in uh, in Iraq as in Jabail uh, as well too. So, uh, both Iraq and Jabail are, are very strong businesses uh, for the group at this stage, and 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 contribute significantly. 
Yeah. Now, it's it's one of the things I've noticed recently is that Saudi seems to be on a roll, uh, really investing heavily, not only in in a new port called Neom and, and whatnot. And we see massive investments coming in. I hear a lot from the members I run in my separate freight project freight forwarding network about business coming into Saudi. So uh, that you also have a Jubail as, as a potential is something that uh, they should know about. I mean, that you are available and you have good relationship with Saudi, I suppose. Absolutely. I mean, obviously, the the, the, the Jabail operation is uh, not only a container operation, but a break bulk operation as well, yeah. too. Um, regretfully, Neum is geographically located on the uh, on the West Coast, not the yeah, East Coast. But, that's true. but still, as you said, Bo, the, the economic activity, the infrastructure, ports and terminals, um, city infrastructure in Riyadh and uh, and Jeddah in particularly at the moment is astounding, and mm. and the amount of money that's being invested by the Saudi government uh, is is just uh, is enormous. And I think, you know, if you look at if you look at what's going on in Saudi, I think uh, the Dubai model, if mm. you like, f that's evolved over the last twenty or thirty years has been has been nothing short of a, a success story. Oh, yeah. um, and other Emirates, together with the kingdom, have tr uh, are now starting to emulate. It, it, it's, uh, it, it is impressive. I mean, when you see pictures from the past, I just came uh, in transit via Dubai and, of course, uh, on Emirates Airlines. I mean, uh, just, uh, just alone flying with them makes it worthwhile just to fly there and back, you know. It's a pleasure. Yeah, exactly. exactly. I'm, I'm used to uh, Scandinavian airlines, so uh, I'll, I'll take Emirates any day. Uh, I'm sure you. I'm sure they beat Qantas too. I totally agree. <laughs> Absolutely, they do. So um, uh, here, here, one of the final questions I'd like to to ask you. If anyone viewing this uh, video is interested in getting a quote, um, getting an offer, understanding a bit more on what you can do, that, then then you are the guy to, to see and to write to directly, right? Absolutely, Bo. Please, uh, anybody that wants to reach out in regards to any of our terminals, uh, I'm more than happy to, to have discussions. I'm more than happy to get on one of those beautiful Emirates airlines <laughs> and... Uh, and uh, and travel to talk face to face because that's what uh, that's what our business is, is is all about. But yeah, I'm the guy. Reach out okay. to me whether it's yeah. uh, whether it's Corfu Khan, whether it's Jabail, Iraq, um, or our terminal in Canaveral, which um, is also another interesting uh, operation. Okay. Certainly containers and brake bolt there okay. as well too. So absolutely reach out to me. Uh, uh, yeah, just uh, the, now you mentioned Canaveral. I was just about to ask one very final question. We're talking Middle East here and suddenly we talk south of Florida. Is there is there any, uh, is it rocket science or what? <laughs> Uh, I, I guess I'm not allowed. I'm not at liberty to say too much. Suffice to say that we deal in containers, we deal in brake bulk, uh, and we deal in some other interesting cargoes moving across our key. <laughs> okay, I, uh, no, 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 no further comments. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> yeah, but it, it's quite a mix. Middle East and suddenly some place in Florida that is well known for for rocket launches. Yes, very good. <laughs> Right, Simon. But uh, really, you, you uh, said that, Bo. I didn't say that. No, no, of course not. No, I, I'm a journalist. <laughs> I can say anything. <laughs> but but uh, listen, Simon, this, this was uh, most interesting. And uh, I, I'm sure that you'll be able also to, to uh, before we finally cut together the interview, uh, you'll have some uh, material or video or something where people can really see uh, pictures from Corfa Can or, or a video, maybe. Right? Absolutely. Uh, look, details are fully on our website at uh, golftainer.com. Okay. Um, the website the website is being updated, but bear with us. But there is uh, there is a substantial amount of information on there about each of our terminals. Okay. Uh, my contact details are there as well too. Okay. Um, so anybody who's viewing the video, please reach out. I'm more mm -hmm. than happy to uh, to talk to uh, to anybody about anything. Uh, that's great. That that's the right attitude and uh, easily approachable and not uh, nose up but uh, nose level. I think that's uh, absolutely that, that, that's what uh, I like as an editor and hopefully most of my viewers like too. So, thank you very much for that, Simon. And with those words, I want to say uh, to all our listeners, viewers, and readers from around the world, this was yet another great interview by Project Cargo Weekly. Our special guest of honor today has been the Chief Sales Officer at Golf Tainer, located in Corfa Can, United Arab Emirates, Mr. Simon Ainsley, a very well, uh, let's say, experienced uh, man in shipping uh, worldwide. And do uh, reach out to him directly and contact him. 
Uh, I take, of course, only 5%, as you know. Uh -huh. But uh, anyhow, <laughs> do reach out to Simon uh, if you have anything uh, to discuss or potentials in the Middle East. Thank you very much and stay tuned for further interviews in the near future. Thank you.